What is up, YouTube? This is Two Coin One. Come back to the video today. I'm going to talk to you about my top 12 favorite TV shows. Now, I don't watch as much TV as I do movies, but I've still watched a fair amount of TV shows in my time, and I wanted to talk about my personal favorites. So, without further ado, let's move on to the list. Starting with number 12, The X Files. This show could have been a lot higher, but sadly, after season six, there was a big drop in quality. There have been three awful seasons, a shit movie, and a admittedly decent revival, but still, it's not better than meh. Uh, those first six seasons, though, are honestly some of the most creative television you'll ever see. The things they investigate are bizarre and interesting, but all of it is kept grounded by two great lead performances and some really smart writing. Like, gotta give credit to the writers here. It might surprise you to know that Vince Gilligan was a writer on the show, but if you don't know who that is, he moved on to create Breaking Bad. So yeah, X-Files was great in its time, though sadly, just not as good anymore. Number 11 is King of the Hill. Admittedly, this is a personal thing. I know a lot of people don't enjoy this show, but I found the show really funny. It was down to earth, and that is probably going to bore a lot, but for me, it was freaking hilarious. The characters are memorable, and honestly, this is one of the most quotable shows ever for me. And while it had its share of weak episodes, I'll be the first to admit that, the strong episodes were just so funny and clever that I had to put it on the list. Number 10 is the first three seasons of SpongeBob, because after that, the show sucked. Uh, this is absolute comedic genius, though. The surreal and bizarre humor of these first few seasons built up so much goodwill that people are still watching it, even though, as I said, there have been many terrible seasons since. But these first three still do hold up. The jokes are unforgettable. Some of them are so creative, it just blows my mind. It's hilarious. Like, these, these just stick in my head. They're all so funny. I mean, what else can I say? This is one of the funniest cartoons ever made, and these first three seasons are still worth watching even if nothing the show has produced since then is. Number nine is Ash vs. Evil Dead. Uh, Sam Raimi is one of my favorite directors of all time in terms of film, but his television has never been that good to me. It's not all bad. I thought Xena was okay, but this show really clicked with me. Maybe it was the over-the-top gore, maybe it was the comedy, or maybe it was the supremely likable talent of Bruce Campbell in the lead role, but for me this show was just great. And it really speaks volumes to how good Sam Raimi is as a director. This show has only had one season, and it's still one of the best things on TV, honestly. Number eight is Samurai Jack. Uh, I've always loved the lone adventurer archetype, whether it be the Mad Max franchise, Indiana Jones, or the criminally underrated Harryhausen Sinbad films, but something about this character trope has always been fascinating to me, and Samurai Jack does it beautifully. This show effortlessly blends genres like sci-fi, fantasy, comedy, hell, noir, western, every genre under the sun, and that's why this show was so awesome. It was action-packed also. Half time, a whole, entire second halves of episodes would be just big action set pieces. It's great. The locations were interesting. The animation was really creative and fantastic. And of course, Aku was hilarious, the villain of the show. Samurai Jack is a creative, unique, and brilliant show. And it absolutely deserves a spot on this list. Number seven is Batman the Animated Series. Um, I've made it clear before that I am a much bigger Superman fan, but I'm still a Batman fan even though, again, to a lesser extent. And Batman the Animated Series was a perfect interpretation of the character. It had a certain class to it that other shows just didn't possess. It was very much like the old Fleischer Brothers Superman shorts, which are still amazing, by the way. I'd recommend those as well. Except it had Batman in it. And on top of that, the music was just fantastic. It brilliantly used Danny Elfman's music from the first two Tim Burton movies. Uh, the voice acting, of course, perfect. Kevin Conroy is Batman, same with Mark Hamill as the Joker. Batman the Animated Series may be the definitive adaption of this character. I think it's you know kind of neck and neck with the Dark Knight. Um, and it's one of the best adaptions of any character, period. So yeah, Batman the Animated Series is, is freaking awesome. And number six is Whose Line Is It Anyway? The American version, but uh, pre-revival. I'm not a big fan of the revival they've been doing lately. This show is improv at its best. No show has made me laugh so hard on such a consistent basis. There's a reason marathoning this show has become so popular, and that is because it's just so fun to watch. I think most of us can agree the best cast members were Ryan Stiles, Colin Mockery, and of course Drew Carey, who's the superior host. Uh, they were great on their own, but together they gave this such hilarious jokes. All, almost all the best jokes came from them. Um, my personal favorite game on the show was uh, Scenes from a Hat. I could watch that for hours. Uh, honestly, Whose Lines in Anyway is one of the most delightful shows you could watch. It, it's really funny. Uh, that's it for part one. Tune in for part two. This is T Quentin One signing out.